Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena, episode 120 for Wednesday, October 19th, 2016. Reading it later. This episode of Android App Arena is brought to you by Automatic, the small adapter that turns your clunker into a smarter connected car. For more information on their brand new Automatic Pro adapter, visit automatic.com slash twit and enter the limited time offer code twit for $20 off the new device. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. Life can be chaos. So even though I may really want to read that 20-page diatribe on what makes Android Nougat different from Android Marshmallow, now might not always be the very best time to do that. Bookmarking things like this can be messy, at least in the browser, that is. Taking up space in your bookmarks, out of view, which means you'll probably forget you put it there in the first place. And really, when it comes to reading an article later, it's not like we want to keep it forever and ever. We just want to remember to read it and then maybe move on with our lives. And reading it later isn't the only reason for these apps that I'm going to talk about today. They actively strip the article content from the site, which will reduce bandwidth consumption when it's uh, time to read that, uh, not, not to mention speeding it all up on the load. And many times, it's simply easier on the eyes for a number of reasons. Finally, these apps store that content for offline reading, meaning those articles you mark will be waiting on your device in full, even when you lack connectivity. That's a big bonus feature right there. For years, there have been three main contenders in the Read It Later space for Android, and in September, one of those, Readability, shut down for good. That leaves two strong options right now, so let's take a look at those in this week's roundup. First up, an app that had a solid run on iOS for years before finally being developed for Android. Instapaper is solidly founded on the idea that the reader should be able to customize the look and feel of all those words that they've pushed off to read at another time. Here's my mainstream of articles marked for reading later. The layout and font somewhat resemble that of a newspaper, at least to start with. Uh, Let's tap into an article, and as you can see, the full article is pulled from the site, and the text is laid out in Instapaper's easy-on-the-eyes font and format. The inline images from the article are also brought into the stream, so you don't miss out on that extra context. The visual layout is tweakable. All you have to do is tap these double A's up here. That allows me to set the brightness of articles. I can select from six different font options. I can also enlarge or shrink the size of the text layout if that's easier on my eyes, and even change the color of the paper that sits behind the text. Even beyond that, I can adjust the default text spacing in all directions. One feature that actually aims to maximize your time spent reading, and this is very different, but very cool. All this stuff here is the speed reading function. Here you can tweak the speed at which a single word from the article will flash before your eyes uh, before moving on to the next word and so on throughout the entire article. In other words, you'll read the article one word at a time as they fly by, kind of like flashcards. It takes a little bit of time to adjust to, but by doing so, you can train your eyes and your brain to take in the article at speeds that are sometimes faster than traditional reading styles. Very cool. If I highlight some important text here, I'm given the option to highlight uh, that text permanently, or I can highlight and drop my own attached note. This actually saves that passage and note for later reference in the side slide out tray under the notes section. And of course, any articles that I've liked or archived will be filed away here in their own sections out of view from the main list. You'll also find this video tab that actively keeps track of anything that's been marked for later that contains a video to be played. And finally, Instapaper has a web client along with apps for, of course, Android and also iOS. All of this is available in a limited sense for free, but for $2.99 per month or $29.99 per year, things open up to allow for unlimited notes, speed reading sessions, also unlimited, as well as full text search through all articles that have been saved to Instapaper. You can find Instapaper in the Play Store right now. 
There's one read it later app with the longest history, I'd say, and widest support on Android. And yes, I did cover this app almost two years ago, so I'll stop you on that email right there. For this roundup, I've decided to take another look because, well, it's seen by many as the granddaddy of the category. The app is Pocket, which appropriately enough used to be called Read It Later. Here's my main list of articles that I've saved to Pocket. I use this every single day of the week. The headlines are accompanied by a nice hero image on the right side, if there is one attached to the article. I can go ahead and tap into that article and I'm shown Pocket's own stripped down version of the full post from the site with those embedded images also included in line. I can tap an image and that's gonna take me to a nice little carousel within Pocket of any of those images that were included in the article. That's gonna prevent the need to, for scrolling through the article to find all those images. Customization of the look and the layout can be done in the overflow menu under display settings, where I can select between two different font types. I kinda of wish there were a few more there. Font sizes, the background color, and brightness of the articles, all in an effort to make things easier on the eyes. Tag functionality is built in, which is a good way to keep topics organized for later reference, especially if you happen to use Read It Later apps, not only for reading things later, but also for storing them in perpetuity, which you can do easily here. Pocket has a bit of a social element in that I can tap that heart button to post this article as a recommendation to anyone inside Pocket that might be following my own personal activity within the app. And when I'm all done with the article, I'll simply tap the check mark to send it to my archive. Now, speaking of the social aspect of the app, from this main screen, I can tap into the recommended feed that is built up from other people that I'm following inside Pocket. These are articles I may have missed, but that those people have recommended to others to check out, with each of them accompanied by a save button if I wanna add those to my own feed. This stores those articles to the device for reading when my internet connectivity goes away, for example. In the side slide out tray, I can find all my articles, of course, but also narrow things down to just video or image content stored within. And settings reveals a huge list of customizations, including more view options, volume rocker scrolling of longer articles, and offline storage controls. Pocket is about as cross-platform as it gets with clients for pretty much any platform you can imagine. You can get all of this for free. But for $4.99 per month or $44.99 per year, your articles will persist even if the original site goes away. You'll also get unencumbered search, tag suggestions, and an ad-free experience. Find Pocket in the Play Store now. Now, you may someday soon have another option beyond these two. Dev and beta versions of Chrome for Android seem to show that Read It Later functionality is coming soon to Google's browser. No word as to when that might actually happen for everyone, but it looks like Google is on the case. All right, before we move on, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode, and that is Automatic. It's the small adapter that turns your clunker into a smarter connected car. Automatic has launched the new Automatic Pro. It's a new unlimited 3G car adapter with no monthly fees or subscription. Always there, 3G is gonna let you know where your vehicle is parked at any time. It also lets you track your vehicle even when you're not with it. It works with if this then that for endless customization, you can connect your car to the rest of your life and you can easily file business expenses with popular apps like Concur and Expensify. You can even link your car to a Nest thermostat or even an Amazon Echo. Imagine it, you say the magic word, Alexa, I'm not gonna say it too loud because it'll trigger your echoes, but uh, where did I park my car? And it's gonna tell you exactly where you parked your car through your Echo, very cool. Get human help in a crash, Automatic Pro detects severe accidents and trained responders will call for help when you can't. Automatic works on nearly every car made after 1996. It takes just minutes to connect your car to your iPhone or your Android device, and it works via Bluetooth. Plus, it even integrates with Apple Watch and Pebble. And when you've got this all plugged in and working behind the scenes, the app shows you so much about your own usage. You can find out, for example, exactly how much it's gonna cost you to drive to the, the grocery store or the gas station and back in terms of gas costs. Really super cool stuff. So many different ways that you can plug this in and kind of customize it to your own use. Automatic Pro is normally $129.95, but when you use our exclusive offer code, TWIT, you'll save $20. Visit automatic.com slash twit for more information and remember to use offer code twit to save $20 off the regular purchase price. That's automatic.com slash twit and we thank them for their support.
All right, up next, a Google experiment that I'll be honest, I'm still trying to figure it out. It's this week's big app. If you enjoy the feeling of being so sick you can hardly see straight, then you might get a kick out of Google's new experimental app called Sprayscape. Google calls this a quick hack of the gyroscope inside the phone, and it works in tandem with the camera. Think of this as like a psychedelic photosphere camera of sorts. I'll do my best to explain exactly how this works. When you open the app, you're given the blank photosphere canvas that surrounds you in 360 degrees. Move around and you'll see that grid, that position kind of shift around you. Now, once you tap on the screen and hold your finger there, uh, that's going to open the camera, letting the camera kind of shine through. The image that it's capturing is going to be pulled into that location on the photosphere. Keep it held down and then rotate the phone around and the camera images kind of smear through that motion. Things are blurry unless you fixate the phone in one place, holding it very still as you do this. You can even rotate around to different parts of the sphere and simply tap the screen once to let that image print itself inside that part of the grid. What you end up with is, well, I'm not even really quite sure what I'm looking at half the time, to be honest. It looks unintentionally messy. I mean, I suppose it's different, but I'm just kind of scratching my head trying to figure out why. When Google calls it a quick hack, I suppose they aren't building it up to be much of anything other than an odd way to spend five minutes. And to that end, Sprayscape is successful. Find it in the Play Store for free. I suppose I'm happy that Google doesn't mind just throwing stuff at the wall, making a splattered mess, and then still releasing it for everyone to see, even if I don't completely get it. I suppose I'd prefer that versus not ever letting it see the light of day. So check it out for yourself. Send me your favorite apps and categories to arena at twit.tv. You can also post those to the subreddit, androidapparena.reddit.com. The show plays live every Wednesday around 5 p.m. Pacific following tech news today at twit.tv slash live. And the new episode will always appear in the, in the evening in the feeds and on the show page at twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thanks so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell, and I'll see you next week in the arena.